Hi, everybody. How are you? God bless you. We have a special, special treat for you today. I have Char with me. Hi, Char. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hi, there. This is going to be fun. So. I'm so excited to have her with me. And most of you guys know, if you're familiar with Harrison Ministries International, that when my husband and my, my family can't go with me, then we recruited Char to go with me. And she just kind of um, does a lot for our ministry. She helps us with our Facebook and websites and travel and airplanes. And she does all kinds of things. Thank you, Char, for being such an amazing part of this team. And so uh, I wanted to I've recruited her to something else as if you didn't have enough on your, on your list. But I said to her, I want you to help me do some research so we can tell a little bit about the prophetic season we're in because we had some extraordinary things to come, um, come to our attention that I know are prophetic, that are timely and they are preemptive. Um, they are a warning. They are exciting, you know, for those who are, are going to believe in this. And so we're just excited about giving you some information on what I feel, what we feel as a ministry, what God is doing in this time. So what we're going to do on this video is I'm going to share a story of some things. And Char, you're going to help me not to miss any steps, <laughs> forget anything. And we're going to kind of go back. So we can move forward. And then Shar's going to help us through her research that she's been doing to kind of give us even more insight. So I hope that you guys enjoy this and share this with your friends. So um, when you say back, let's go back all the way, Charlene, to um, I would say the, the New Year's Eve service that we were bringing in 2019. Um, Pastor Aaron Amanda had left that year for a crab concert, I believe overseas. And they he had asked me to come and take his church. And it's not, I just thought about this just now. That is also the service that went literally all night long and people caught on film, on camera. And you can go to the Facebook on Harrison Ministries and find this picture. The Shekinah glory became tangible in that service. You've seen it, Char. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it's amazing yeah. because I'm, I'm wearing a bright red sweater and yet you can only see, I think my shoulder and the they fog glory. do what? They don't have fog machines either. There. No. no. So, I mean, it was the Shekinah glory of God. <laughs> yeah. And you know, when I think about it now, that was the beginning of everything that we're getting ready to talk about in this video. And we had no idea what was ahead of us, did we? <laughs> but God is, God is preemptive. So let's go back to that service and the word that the Lord gave me then. And kind of, we can't go through every word. We would be here for hours, but we're going to get, we're going to kind of skip through a couple years where the Lord was actually preparing us prophetically and painting a picture because you want to know why God gives us little pictures of little things. He's little nuggets of truth from here is to keep us moving forward and to know that he is aware of us. He's always got a way of escape for us that we don't have to dread. And so when we, when God speaks, we may not understand the word right then, but if we stand in faith and believe what he's speaking and begin to research scriptures and then allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, the revelation of those scriptures, then those things that he's showing us prophetically will then be able to make sense. And Charlene, how many times she's been with me a few years now, how many times have we seen, had heard a prophetic word or had a prophetic vision or dream? And we had no clue, just exactly. And then later, and we're like, oh, my gosh. That's yeah. amazing. And none of these things are by happenstance or coincidence because God is not a coincidence. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
And so I'm going to take you back to that prophetic word so we can move forward very quickly. That prophetic word was this. And Charlene, you'll remember this. I asked the Lord, I said, what is going to happen in 2019? The Lord said this was the beginning year of greater. Remember that? Yep. And I didn't realize just how important the word beginning was. But he said this was going to be the beginning year of greater. And the reason why it was the beginning is because it was going to start a prophetic movement, a supernatural movement in the church. Those that have ears to hear and eyes to see in us, moving us towards some of the great, one of the greatest harvests I believe that the world is ever going to see. It's moving us towards that. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. And so what, so when he said the beginning year of greater, of course, I began to think of the scripture when he said, when Jesus told his disciples, he said, listen, uh, these things, I'll, I'll go away. It's, it's best that I even go away right. because you're going to, and I'm paraphrasing, you're going to do greater things, even greater things. And we've heard that preached before, but what gets my attention now is when he said um, the word beginning. It will be the beginning of greater. I want to share, I want to kind of skip through some things. When we, when I was on an airplane going somewhere, because we've been on a lot of them the last two years, I asked the Lord, what are you, what, what, what are we going to, what are we doing? Like what's happening? <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me and he said, go to the beginning. Remember me sharing that? I sure do. That was recently. Yeah. Okay. I didn't tie that in to the 2019, but that word beginning was actually powerful because when you go to the beginning of the Bible, literally to Genesis um, chapter one, there's three words that start this whole book off and it says in the beginning. <laughs> And I, I pause right there because I don't want to take, there was a, there was a man in my life, precious man and Dr. Ron Charles, him and his wife traveled the world uh, as missionary archeologist. He's just amazing, uh, an amazing man. And he taught me years ago to read the Bible out loud. And he said these words to me. He said, every period, every comma, every semicolon, Every, the way it's, 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 it's there for a purpose. And so I, when I would read this in the beginning, I wanted to know exactly what that meant, not how it's preached, but what, what was the, the prophetic word behind the Holy Spirit when he breathed this, this, these three words in the beginning? Well, what I found out was the beginning means first fruits. Okay, it means the first fruits. It means a, 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 a certain time, a placement, an, an order, a ranking. And so for the, this, the Genesis to start off like talking about the very most important thing, which was his fruit. And then you know the story. I preached it. Some of you guys have heard me preach it. When the Lord began to take me to Genesis 126, when it's recorded in that scripture, he says, let us make man in our image. And y'all know I preached that I felt like because this was a, a word of the Lord as he was getting ready to create mankind, this was before the fall. And so God's first plan, people always want to know what the will of God is for their life, Charlene, but God's will for mankind, his first idea, the whole reason of creating us was to be in the image and the likeness of who he was. You know, some people preach that we were created to worship God. Mm -mm. We weren't created. We get to worship God. We weren't created to worship God. We get to worship God. You know, he has 24 elders in the throne room all the time saying, holy, holy. can you imagine? <laughs> I mean, what would be the purpose of everything else if we were only created to worship? 
We were created to, he was wanting to, um, God is a God of, of, of duplication. <laughs> and God was a God of creation, more, a God of abundance, more than enough. You know what I'm saying? And so he began, he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them, let them, those that have the same fruit as I do, let them, those that, whose heart is the same condition of my heart, let them have dominion. Let them have power. People think because they carry a Bible and they go to a certain church and they're a member, or maybe they're part of the praise team, or maybe they're a pastor, or maybe they're a prophet, or maybe all these things. Uh, um, you can be those things and still not be a them. <laughs> I want to be a them, <laughs> you know? And so um, in order, there is a, um, a, a law, so to speak, kind of like the law of gravity, that we need to know that God doesn't go outside of his word. And when he says it's for them to know, it's not for them to know, it's for you to know the, the mysteries the, of the key, have the keys to the kingdom. There is a people out of people. And that's who God is revealing himself to in a whole different level right now. So if you keep going through verse one, when you get to verse uh, 28 and says, and God blessed them, not everybody, but them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Now, I know that, that we think that we know what that means. And, and yes, that God wanted us to be fruitful and have families and grow and populate the earth. Of course, that's what that means too. But it's also because God is not a, a one. He, he doesn't just heal you. He makes you whole. He's, he's the, the beginning and the end. He's not just saying go out and make babies and multiply them. He's saying, be fruitful. You are blessed when you are remain in the image and the likeness of who I am, because that was my first will for you. And of course, you know, the, the story where uh, Satan came in the form of a serpent and offered uh, Eve fruit. And you've heard me preach the message. It wasn't apples and bananas and lemons and grapes or plums that he offered her. He offered her the fruit he offered her was a choice. And when she took uh, 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 the choice, something that opposed the beginning, she, that fruit that she took a bite of, so to speak, was the, uh, the opposition of the fruit of who he was. And when that happened, her eyes, their eyes were open and they could see that they were naked. Although they could see now, where there was lack. Bless God. So that's not what we're going to talk about, but I kind of need to lay that foundation to get where we're going. Because when we run into a, um, a time or a season, Charlene, we're not running into it blindly or, oh, happenstance. We're actually coming into a season because it's, it's a prophetic moment. See, God knows the end from the beginning. It's a prophetic moment that we're coming into. And I think it's a true prophet of God's responsibility to meditate upon the word, to seek the face of God, to listen to what he is saying, and then be the mouthpiece of what he is saying. I don't know where the prophetic got so lost and saying, thus said the Lord, thus said the Lord, thus said the Lord. And we started prophesying people's marriages and, and money in the mail and, and all these other things. Knowing that when we put the word of God in, 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 in our life and we apply it and we start uh, meditating on it and we become having intimacy with his word, all those things begin to take place. So we're getting ready to share a prophetic word with you and i'm i'm going to be real it's going to be very deep so if you're not ready for a really deep prophetic word you probably don't want to finish the rest of this video do you Shar? oh you're about to get some meat that's all i gotta say and if you don't want it i we, that's sorry I don't it's mind-blowing in it that's what it is and what i like about it it's not a harrison ministry thing it's no. not ronna harrison um, it's going to involve several people mm -hmm. that we all got together and started talking about. Well, not several, but you know, the people in my, my little, my little crew. 
And the thing about prophecy, I was, I was studying this yesterday. How you right now? There's a lot of open mouths because we're in the open mouth season. But when the true prophets of God sh show up, so does the prophets of Baal. Like so, you have to. That's why he, it's very important that we carry the heart of Christ, the discernment. We need to know the word of God for ourselves because. If someone gets up here and begins to tell you something, a vision or a dream, like we're getting ready to do, you need to be able to uh, not only find it in your Bibles, but you need to also be able to discern it in your spirit. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever heard something that came from someone that you that you admired? And when they said something, you're like, hmm, <laughs> I don't know, you know. And I, that's happened to me before. And I've, I didn't judge that person. I just said, Lord, I have ears to hear. I have eyes to see. If, if, if you're trying to tell me something in that, then I need you to reveal it to me. Because that's, that doesn't make no sense to me. So I encourage you to do that. So from that point, Char, then we, we went through to 2020. Now, this was before covid this was before um, all the political hate and racism and, and all the stuff that happened in the streets of America and all, all that. This was all before that. The beginning, December, coming into January 2020, the Lord spoke and said this. He didn't tell me that President Trump was going to get second term. He didn't tell me anything about that. This is what the Lord told me. The spirit of witchcraft was going to increase, but I have also increased my profits. We preached it till we always we said it over and over and over and over. And do you agree? That's what we saw. <laughs> the spirit of witchcraft. The spirit of witchcraft is is not just a lady with a black coned hat and a long black dress and a green nose with a broomstick. The spirit of witchcraft is the spirit of rebellion. And the spirit of rebellion is anything that rebels or opposes God's word. I mean, if you have a, a thought, you act upon that thought. I don't care how long you've been going to church and it opposes the, the word of God. You're acting in a spirit of rebellion or you're acting, in, you're acting in a spirit of witchcraft. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I didn't write it. And so even though there are people, when we hear the word witchcraft, we think of the, we think of people that are in the cult or people that worship Satan. And that is true. When you think of white witchcraft and black magic and all these new age and all these names for it. But really, when you get right down to the, 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 the ground floor of it all, it's anything that opposes the word of God. That's where Antichrist is coming. You know, we preached a message, what prayer are you praying that's releasing the devil? Because if we're praying anything that opposes the word of God, we're praying a, a prayer that does not line up with it, then you're opposing what he said. You're against it. We're not going to preach about that today. But what I'm, I'm trying to bring you to where it happened. So he said, the spirit of witchcraft is going to increase, but I've also increased my profits. The Lord began to take me from there and from that word increase, because he said, I'm going to increase my profits. And I realized that God had took us into the decade of the pay, P-E-Y, which was the, um, uh, the, the decade of the open mouth is what that meant. The decade of the open mouth. So God was calling people, his church, the same year that they muzzled us, the same year that they masked us was the same year that the Lord said, this is the year, the decade of your open mouth. So what was happening? Satan was doing everything he could in the natural to, to defy this, what God was prophesying in the spirit. And so from that, I went to the word increase and I began to realize that the Bible says in order for us to increase, we must increase in him. We must decrease in ourselves. 
Paul said it over and over and over. You know, uh, he, Paul wrote 14 books of the Bible and the whole 14 books is him saying, his journey saying, you must die. <laughs> In order to live, you must die. Okay, and the 14 books is his journey, his testimony of that. And so we must, what I mean by that is we must die to our own flesh. We must understand the voices of God, the voice of God. There, the Bible says there's voices in the city. There's, there's opinions and things going on around us. Then there's the voice in the temple, which is Satan, which is he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But then there is the voice of the Lord God. And so that decreasing of ourself and the increasing of who he is in us, which goes back, by the way, to being fruitful and having dominion and multiplying, it goes right back to that. That takes us into our greater. Come on, somebody. I wish I had somebody. Char, you just got to say amen by yourself. <laughs> amen. Now, I know there's people saying amen. So, Okay. Yeah. So then we went from that. Then things began to happen and our world just began to change. And you could, I mean, God began to confirm. And that's, that's how you know there's a, that's a prophetic word. God said it, it came to pass. And everything he said, I could find in my Bible. So when God gave me a prophetic word, like the spirit of witchcraft, and that I, I've increased my profits, I could find scripture that told me what that meant. And as soon as I had a revelation of it, God is so merciful, Charlene. As soon as I had a revelation of it, because if you seek the Lord, you will find him every time. Then when things began to take place in the natural, that confirmed the preemptive word of the spirit, then guess what? I was prepared. I was prepared. The Lord is wanting, you cannot call yourself a Christian in the army of the Lord. Remember that old song about being in the army of the Lord? I'm not going to sing. It's because in the natural, my son was in the military. They didn't, they didn't just let him sign a paper and throw him out in the field. They prepared him. They conditioned him. They put him on different uh, test runs and they practice and they taught him. And when they prepared him, then they put him in, in a place where he could put to practice what he had been taught. That's how the prophetic works. Okay. So from there, then in the middle of that, I don't really remember when it was, Charlene, but that's when the Lord woke, I woke up in the middle of the night, remember? And I asked, I said, Lord, now in the angel of the Lord, I was laying on my side and I said, Lord, and immediately this voice, it was so powerful. I can't describe this voice, but I mean, everything stood up and I, I, my, the hair on my head uh, just stood on attention and I it jolted me and he when he said here am I when he said here am I I prophetically knew he was saying I am aware of you I never left you I never forsake you when he speaks he reconfirms his word over and over and over again and I asked the Lord, when I turned, he was standing in a, I had a vision of the Lord. He was standing between my, my door and my television on the wall. And he said, and I said, Lord, what time is it? And the Lord said, it is time to turn. The, the reason why I'm, I'm reminding everybody of all these short little moments, because it's bringing us to what's happening right now, which is going to blow your mind. And he began to tell me that we were in a short window of time of this turning, of this turning. And so from that, God began to take us through to 2020 to we were getting ready to fly into Murchison, Texas, Hope Church down there in Murchison. And it was about 4.30 in the morning. And I've cut through a lot of prophecies. I can't go through them all, but I cut through a lot of them. And I was sitting on my front porch, Charlene, 4.30 in the morning. And I asked the Lord, 
what about 2021? And I knew we were in the continuation of greater. And the Lord said, there's a difference between being crushed and being pressed. And he said, in 2021, there will be an invasion. There will be an invasion of my spirit. And I knew right then, Charlene, that this word invasion, it was like when he said it, I knew that the church had never experienced it. He didn't say outpouring. He said invasion. And I knew that we were getting ready to experience that dominion, that power that came from having the heart of Jesus being known by our fruit and not by our gifts, not by our titles, but literally not lining ourselves up to minister the word, but lining ourselves up to know the word, not to just, not to study his word to go preach somewhere, not to study his word to, to show how smart we are, but to study his word because we want to know Jesus as our personal savior. So we went on to Murchison and had a great time. Well, before we, so I say, I brought you to there. I wanted to bring you to the invasion, but now I'm gonna take you back, back almost a year before that time. And that now we're getting ready to get started to what we're gonna say. I had, um, I speak to Aaron and Amanda weekly and, um, she has a very strong prophetic gift. Aaron, Aaron actually has a, an amazing prophetic gift himself. They're amazing ministers of the gospel. They pastor a church. And when the Lord, it's so amazing, but when the Lord will show me something, I may not have the whole thing, of course. And I will call her and I'll say, let me share with you what the Lord has spoken to me. And let me show you what I dreamed or I had a vision. And let me share with you. And it will be, it's happened too many times to be a coincidence. It's happened hundreds of times. It happens all the time. And right when I'll say it or do it, she'll say, you're kidding me. You're not going to believe it. Aaron, I just told Aaron, the Lord spoke to me. that, And it will be either the same thing I'm saying. Or it will be the other side. Like I'll see this side of it and she'll see the other side. And when together we put it together, we can see a bigger picture of what God is saying. It just blows our mind. We do it all the time. Well, that is kind of what happened here. And so what um, I had told her, and I don't know the whole prophetic because I have ministered to her prophetically hundreds of times. And one of the things I had told her was I said, Amanda, I feel like in this turning, it's like I saw a window in a window. And I said, there's, um, no, that was this prophecy. So the prophecy before that, I told her, I said, the Lord has given you the ability to, when he uh, dispatched angels, he gives you the ability to get an understanding and not only what their jobs are, but their names. And I had ministered to her about these angels. Well, I was flying somewhere again in the midst of all of this. And Charlene, you'll remember this. And the Lord said, and I, he said it just like this. He said, just like this, I'm dispatching angels. You remember that, Char? And I repeated, and I said, you're dispatching angels. And he repeated back, yes, I'm dispatching angels. And when he said it, the state of Texas lit up. This was how long ago do you think, Charlene, that I saw, heard that one? It's been a while, at least. I don't know. A maybe a, over a, a year or over so. A year, maybe yeah. two years. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long, it's been about a year or so. Taylor was not in the military anymore. He was home. Oh. So, because I remember seeing him. So, um, I never knew what that meant. I'm dispatching angels. Well, after that, after that, 
I began, when I got home, I began for two weeks. I would just be cooking or doing laundry or whatever. And I would see this. I would just see this flash of something. And when I would see it, it looked like it was metallic color. And I knew in my spirit that it was, I'm sorry, I was watching my daughter. I knew in my spirit that it was an angel. So I knew immediately what I had already told Amanda. The Lord will reveal to you what kind of angel it is what's his job so I thought well Lord if you can reveal that to Amanda you can reveal this angel to me well the Lord said we were at the beginning of greater in 2020 we were going to he said this was going to be the continuation of greater so I have always prayed from 2019 through 2020 especially through 2020 thank you for greater thank you for greater things I'm not going to look around me at all the mess, I'm thanking you and believing you for greater things. And so I began to just, uh, you know, pray like that. So for two weeks, I would see this angel and I'd say, Lord, who is this angel? What's his job? What is he doing? I know I, I'm seeking you on this. If we seek the Lord, we find him. And so he began, it was uh, uh, the Lord. I remember one night I opened my eyes and this angel, he'd always just kind of, I'd see like flashes of him. This time I opened my eyes and the Lord allowed me to gaze upon him. But I couldn't see the whole whole thing. Charlene, I just saw this side of him. I didn't really see a face. I just saw this side of him. And his armor was not gray. It wasn't black. It wasn't silver. It was like a, a combination of all those colors. It was metallic. It was metal, metallic. And I remember it pointed out like this like that and it was the armor was not it wasn't a metal or aluminum I mean it was just not not anything I could describe other than how I'm describing it and I when I saw him and I gazed upon him I was able and I remember there was some things here on his um the armor on the armor and I immediately sat up in bed when I did I, I he disappeared and then I said Lord who is this angel? I need to know this angel. What is his job? What is he doing here? And so I began, I thought, well, I'm just going to pray. So I said, Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for greater. Lord, I thank you because greater is here, Father. I thank you that we're in the days of greater things, greater miracles. I'm just praying like this. And then I said, Lord, I thank you for greater. All of a sudden, everything in me just and it hit me. <gasps> That's greater. Do you understand? The Bible says that. That. Um, these things. These angels. Are ministering angels. And they have jobs. And purposes. And titles. And they have names. Charlene and I were just looking well ago. In our Bibles. And you know. God has seven of his main angels and list them who they are we're going to talk about one of them here in just a minute and so when I said greater is here then I began to tell my husband and I asked the Lord what is his job we begin to study the scripture and look at it and we found out his name was Gadal and that he was a part he was an archangel and he was a part of Michael's army so i don't believe michael has an army then you need to read revelations because in revelations i have it pulled up right here you doing all right bell bell in revelations what did i say 12 now 12, seven yeah now this this computer um always i use it every day and all of a sudden, right now, it's frozen. I use it every day. But you know what? We're not going to read it. Yeah, read it for me. All right. So Revelations 
12, 7 says, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels right there. fought against the, the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels. So angels. in one, in one inter interpretation, it says Michael and his army. In one interpretation is Michael and his army. In the King James Version, it says Michael and his army angels so you got to understand michael has his own army so i knew if god was revealing that and we've seen this scripture but it, when he brought it back and kind of highlighted it then it would make sense that god is going to begin to to reveal who these angels are isn't that powerful so here's what happened next that's when i told um Amanda, I said, God is going to give you the ability to not only see these angels, but you're going to know the title. Well, I asked the Lord, I said, okay, so the archangel, Gadal, or the archangel, greater, what is he, what is, what was he here for? And the Lord spoke to me and said this, he has been assigned to you. I've sent him to be on assignment with you. He, he'll never, he won't leave you. And so I don't have the rest of that yet. So I don't believe that. Then you need to go ahead and click off because you don't believe that. You're not going to enjoy anything else we're going to say today. <laughs> I'm just being real. <laughs> I mean, and let me tell you, can I, can I say something in love? If this is all too much and you don't believe in the prophetic and you don't believe in dreams and visions and angels and you, this is just rubbing you the wrong way, I don't want to cause you to be upset and to sin or to have something come up in your heart. I love you and I'm praying for you. I didn't ask to see these things or hear these things, but here we go. I can't deny them. I can't take credit for them because... Charlene, would you? Yes. <laughs> Is she? Yep. Go ahead. Sing a song or do something. Okay. Well, no, I'm not that good of an entertainer, but you guys get the point of what Ron is saying. Like we're about to go into and share some things with you and it's going to be, so for some of you, it's going to be very exciting. You're, 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 it's going to confirm what you're already maybe knowing or seeing for some of you, it's going to be challenging, but that's all right. Right, Ronna. That's right. That's I'm okay. so sorry. You're good. Still a You're mama. Good. I heard a noise. My daughter is still in a wheelchair and I didn't know she fell out of it. Okay, so let's get to it. Yes. So from that point, God began to confirm that prophecy to Amanda. And I actually had flew to Nashville. And I was actually upstairs in her daughter's room because I was going to minister that night at their church. When God began to reveal to her the names of these two angels. And if you want to hear her side of the story, you can go to Restoring Hope Church or you can go to Aaron Amanda Crabb's Facebook. And it's on, a, it was last Monday's, uh, no, it wasn't last, no, it's last Sunday night, right? Wasn't it? Last Sunday night? Night, I believe, yeah. Yeah, it was a Sunday night because they were iced in. So that would have oh, been. Let me give you the example. I thought it was Wednesday. Huh? I thought was it, it was Wednesday night. night. It was okay. Wednesday night. It was a church night. You're pro you're right. Yeah. Let me they see. It was last Wednesday night. They so were live. on the 17th. Okay. So Want to look for their live that they did on the 17th. And she's going to tell her side of all this. It is powerful. So through her vision, the Lord had given her two names. Uriel and Viola. And she had a, I remember, I remember her saying, you're not going to believe I saw this name Viola. And she told me all about the lady that she met and prayed for. And the Lord gave her a word. And she asked the lady, what is your name? And the lady said, Viola. But here's what stood out to me. Amanda had said that the Lord said that uh, Uriel, that Viola would be close up on the heels of Uriel, Viola would be. Now, 
go, go back to where I was on the front porch at 4 30 in the morning. The Lord kept saying, there's getting ready to be an invasion. I'm, the Holy Spirit, there's going to be an invasion. Now, you got to think like this. God did not cause, because that winter storm that swept through the United States, there was a lot, of, there was people who died. There was people that were hungry. Charlene herself has gone without water, electricity for days. So this is not a punishment. The things of the natural reflect the things of the spirit. There is a war going on. We're not been in a political war. I know that everybody's screaming Democrat, Republic, you know, this, that, th that those terms don't exist anymore, honestly. This is, we are in a spiritual war. It's a war simply in everything that we do, everything that we say, our television programs, our everything is, is just simply between good and evil. That's it. You can't, you can't point fingers at people because we don't fight against flesh and blood, but principalities. It's good and it's evil. And guess what? Whether you believe it or not, the spiritual realm, the spiritual world is more real than this one is. And there's always activity. There's always things going. God, his angels, his archangels, heaven, visions, dreams, that's real. Hell, demons, dragons, Lucifer sin it's real it's all real and so we're just so grateful that god gives us these little pieces to keep us moving forward so we don't faint <laughs> for one thing so we don't say you left us you know what i'm saying that no matter how bad things get in the midst of the worst moment of your life if you know jesus and you've been meditate on his word you can stand if the fruit of who he is resides inside of you and your the condition of your heart is like his then you have dominion and authority you are blessed and even in the middle of an ice storm with no electricity no water you can still speak the word of god and have miracles happen the news and tv and media they only want to tell you the bad but what about you take that pile up in Dallas. Listen, that hurt my heart. I have family in Dallas. I'm East Texas country girl. I'm not from Indiana. Everything that's happening in Texas, Tyler, Texas is where I'm from. Born and raised. All my family is in Tyler and Lindale. And let me tell you something. Tyler hit a record of lowest temperatures in its, in its history. I mean, my son is down there. My family was affected. And yet I had to keep my eyes and my heart on the things above. And that's what we got to do. Even in the midst of famine, you got to understand when Jesus fed the 5,000 plus women and children, come on, somebody. He took nothing little and fed them. And there was enough baskets made over that all the disciples got to take some home extra because he's got them more than enough. And I believe that God in the midst of all the things, because there's going to be worse days ahead in the midst of all these days, he still wants us to know who he is and who we are in him and to operate in the dominion and the, the, the power of who he is, which is the fruit of his spirit. The Bible says in Galatians chapter five, that identifies the fruit of the spirit, which is love, peace, and joy. And you keep going. That love, the Bible says God is love. And you know, the purest form of love, the very purest form of love is called agape. Do you know what that means? That means the open mouth love. What, what season are we in? We are in the decade of the pay, the open mouth. This is a time of the increase of the prophets. This is the time for us to take authority and dominion. This is the time to speak the word of God over our lack, over our health, over our finances, over the weather, over uh, the situations, over um, the, the, the crime in our area, over everything. But he's looking for them. Are you part of a them? Are you part of the them? I want to be a part of the them. See, I was crazy enough. 
I was crazy enough my whole life, even as a child, when I didn't even know what I was saying, I've always had a heart saying, Lord, I don't care if you don't use me, but when the big thing happens, I want to see it. I want to be in the middle of it. We are getting ready to go towards the greatest wealth transfer in the history and we're getting ready to go towards the greatest worldwide harvest ever to happen. We must be educated in his word. You don't need another prophecy. You need a prophetic word from the Lord. You don't need um, uh, uh, you don't need to try to make yourself feel better. You need to educate yourself. You need to pray and ask the Lord to reveal himself to you. Anyway, I can keep preaching like this. Char knows I am. She's probably grinning. All right, Charlene, I asked you a few days ago. Yeah. We do know about <clears throat> now the two names, Uriel and Viola. Yeah. Now, Charlene, recently, and I don't hardly ever turn my, weather, my, chan, my um, uh, TV on. Yeah. Amanda calls me and says, Ron, turn on your weather channel. You're going to pass out. I turn on my weather channel. I have a picture of it. I got to go to it. Yeah, I was trying to find it. I couldn't find it. I, I, I turn on the weather channel. And I see this. It says, I want to find the one I saw. You sent it to me. Viola snow, ice coming hot on the heels of Yuri. Yuri is Uriel. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. So that's the weather channel that she that's took a screenshot of you guys. Now, so y'all know. I don't know who names these storms. <laughs> I'd like to see that old guy <laughs> because I don't know, but it's not a coincidence. And the way they put this, Viola, because you're getting ready to tell us more about Uriel and Viola, but mm -hmm. even in scripture and even in our study, some of this is just um, study from um, uh, different documents. Sometimes we get our information from, from uh, uh, historical documents from the Romans and stuff like that. Well, let me tell you that we know that Uriel came and then Viola came up behind behind them like this then i want to show you one more thing and then i want to turn this over to and i got another one that says viola wrecks havoc from coast to coast but i want to show you this and it had the state of texas underneath it which texas got hit really hard remember when i said the lord said there's going to be an invasion i can't even make this stuff up on the weather channel underneath this right up underneath this is texas it says historic winter, winter invasion in, invasion it says oh. invasion they could have used any word they wanted <laughs> so we have in one winter program on the weather channel yeah uriel yuri viola and invasion yep now charlene i asked you i, I called you losing my mind <laughs> and i was like da, 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 da. help me help me help me get this together yeah help me research this i want you to share with us hmm. some of the things that you that you researched about these don't you believe that i believe i know that greater is the Bible says mercy and goodness follow me all the days that are not. You know, there's an angel of mercy and an angel called goodness. They follow you. There's an angel of greater. I believe that Michael is an archangel. You can talk about that. And I we just proved in Revelation 12, 7 that he himself has an army. And I want to know more about this angel, this archangel within this army called Uriel. And this other angel called Viola. <laughs> yep. Well, I think 
so jumping into this, I just thought it was so interesting. So just to highlight, let's kind of take it backwards. You just showed that in year of invasion. I want to remind everybody what the Lord spoke to Rana at the beginning of the year. And she, he said, this there's going to be an invasion. He didn't say outpouring. He actually used that word. Right. So I just kind of wanted to remind yes. people of that. So then now it's like out there. And the other thing I want to remind people, some of you guys, this is not something, I mean, you, you understand that, but there's some of you guys who may not understand, like Rhonda was saying, these storms, it isn't about the storm. It's about the spiritual things that are going on. And the Lord is revealing in the natural what's going on in the spiritual, which you've already said that, but I just want to remind people because people go, you mean God sent the storm, you know what you said. He sent these storms. No, <laughs> but they're named these names to get our attention. Right. Right. So, okay. So Ron asked me to start research and I was like, yes. <laughs> and so, so we go back to Michael. Of course, we know that Michael, you had researched that before means one who is like God. Right. And he's the archangel. So we started looking up Yuri and Viola and uh, where we could, what this meant well if you go and you look up yuri which is uriel in the hebrew of course he's in a, it, it means light of god or god's light and um he's an archangel and he's actually listed as one of the archangels right and so we were talking about um all the the, the army the angels that are being released so we just saw the name mm -hmm. uriel right so so that was that was one really cool thing. And then we were talking about Viola. There's, there's a little bit more to that. Let me see if I need to, oh, I guess we can talk about I'm, this. While you're doing that, I'm also going to look up a couple things too. Yeah. Okay. So we know okay. that these archangels, Rana, are angels, you know, let's explain what archangels are, right. the difference between archangels and right, normal angels, because there's many, many different angels. We don't even, we can't even begin to even put into words but we know that the archangels are the highest position um they are the angel of presence they are the ones that are allowed in the throne room they they are the um angel of glory right they're they've got the glory on them because they're in that presence well uriel actually means his, his the angel of his presence okay that's actually what uriel Wow. 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 So let's talk about scare scare what happens when Uriel is dispatched. Yes. Well, let's talk about that. If you go back and you look at angel of his presence. So let's go to Isaiah, Isaiah 63, nine, you can go and it says in all of their affliction, he was afflicted and the angel of his presence. It doesn't say Uriel there, but that's Uriel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, save them all in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and bear them and carry them all the days of old. So now, tell us that scripture one more time, Isaiah 63, nine. Okay. So you can, you know, y'all go research this stuff for your own, your, your mind. I can't even, I don't, I can't even go into all the things we don't have time for. I'm trying to keep it with what just happened yeah. in the natural with these storms coming in with Uriel and then Viola on its heels. Um, just, you know, the, the invasion, that's where we're trying to keep it in this little window, but there's, right. there's so much more. Um, so then, okay. So that's, and there's more to it, but let's just wrap your head around that part. So that that angel was just dispatched along right. with army. Cause we know that Michael's already been just, the doll is with you. So these aren't, these are being released. These aren't just any angels being released right now. There's like Ron and I were talking, God wouldn't be releasing his top of the line, top of the top angels for no reason. Right. And the, the, one of the things that we said was, I, I think I read it. I'll have to go back and see where I read it. So I can prove to people the, the resource I got it from that right. these archangels are only released in the last days They're that's right last days and the thing that i know about uriel is he is a master of strategist you know he strategizes he's master at that planner 
He yep. is um, all knowing of, of the supernatural, understanding patterns. And uh, yeah, he's an understander of patterns. And isn't it funny, it, weather, don't they mention a weather, weather, look at the weather patterns. Patterns, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so, what I knew about and, him. Yeah, and if you do more study and some other, um, some other things, you'll find that they, that these archangels are, they are end of the end time angels. That's what I'm trying to say. They're the end time yeah. angels. They're end time angels. They're not going to be released except for <laughs> the Uriel. I was just reading right there. says best known as a helper of wisdom too. You yes. Why? Wisdom. Yes. Oh, I need it. <laughs> yes, I know. We all need it, especially with these times because we can get caught up right wrong, with everything that's going on. We can get caught up in the natural stuff. And the Lord is reminding us there's way more going on spiritually. We need to look at the things in the spirit that is going on. That's that's what I keep hearing. It's like all this. I've been in without water and without electricity and I could be upset and, you know, uh, but I'm, I'm not. I mean, I had a lot of things going on this week, but I am. I was so excited about looking at what God is doing that all this other stuff didn't even, I don't care. Right. <laughs> didn't right. care. But right. anyway, that's my personal thing. And I want to say this right here. Yeah, because the enemy, Satan, Lucifer. People yes. Say, well, what about Lucifer and hit? You know, Lucifer. Everything that Lucifer has, and hell, and his angels and demons, they are. He's not a creator. He there's he doesn't have the ability to create. And the reason why we know he doesn't have the ability to create because the Bible records there's no truth found in him. There right. has to be an element of truth in order to. To, for creation to come from and right. he doesn't have it and so the enemy also has his kingdom the enemy also has his angels and the enemy his kingdom is a copycat so to speak of the things of the lord that's why we gotta we gotta we gotta take our time even after this video Shar yeah. and i and I encourage you, we're not done researching this. We're going to continue to get more and more and more. So let's recap. So the Uriel is known as an archangel. It's best known as the wisdom and light. It's a strategist uh, um, um, angel. It's also mercy. We didn't mention that. I forgot oh, yeah, to mercy. mention that. No. Any, what mercy. else, Carly? <laughs> Um, uh, the angel, angel of his presence, the presence of, yeah, the angel of the presence of God. Um, uh, gosh, and there's more, like I said, we could go on and on and on, but that, that's really goes to what we're talking about right now. And then the next one, Viola. Gosh. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Let me catch up with you. Okay. Let me see if there's so, anything else. Okay. Not yeah. We can, I'm looking through as you're talking. Yeah, Uriel Hebrew means God is my light, light of God. Um, wow. Angel is present. I mean, it's Angel, which, I mean, you could just keep going. Okay, so the other one, Viola. Okay, so then they talk about Viola coming up right on the hot on the heels, right? Mm -hmm. So I started reaching, researching Viola. Well, there's not an angel that I could find named Viola. So I thought, okay, what is the meaning of Viola? And there's a couple of different meanings, as we know, um, one has to do with, um, I think like violins or musical. Yes. yes. The yes. other, yes. So the other meeting, and this is the way the Lord took me is it also means violet. Viola is short for violet. So I started researching viol, you know, angels and viol in colors. You know that God works with numbers and colors. He yeah. does. And so oh, um, that's how colors that. of the e right? Right. right. Um, okay. So I started researching that and I found that there was an angel called that meant deep purple. Okay. So I started researching that angel. And as we know, violet is deep purple. So I thought, is there a connection there? So as I started studying it I'm like yeah there's a connection there so the angel is called zadkiel it's z-a-d-k-i-e-l k-i-z-a-d-k-i-e-l okay got it 
in Hebrew, now you're going to, okay, so we've said Uriel is, it means all these things, in, including mercy, right? And earlier you just said, God said mercy and great, you know, grace follow us for the, all the days of our life, right? Right. That kill in Hebrew means righteousness of God, grace of God. He's also the archangel of freedom, benevolence, and mercy. So I started like getting it really excited because if you look at the storms that just came, you just, you know, we've got Uriel and now we have um, Viola, which like I said, I believe is if you go do your own research, but I believe that I'm on with this. I really, this, this really resonates because He's also one of the two standard bearers, along with the archangels, Jophiel, who follow directly behind Michael as the head archangels enter into battle. Wow. Praise God. He is associated with the color violet. Okay. When you say violet, it, yes. I remembered my, my, this, this is a color chart uh, from the Hebrew. Yes. And violet is Tishri, which we haven't been too far from Tishri. Remember, we just came from Tishri. And it yep. means touch. Violet means foundation and truth. Foundation, wow. that color violet, the color purple is foundation and truth. Wow. See, found that's what I'm saying. Foundation, truth. I mean, this is just amazing. So it gives you, I'm like going, okay, all these the enemy wants us to focus on the storms, but the Lord just released his angels of, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. So Jewish tradition, as Zadokai is actually the angel of the Lord um, that's mentioned in Genesis chapter 22. So you can, when um, Abraham, well, this, you can go research it, mm -hmm. but go look up G Genesis chapter 22, but he's mentioned in the Bible, okay? So if you keep looking at it, um, so if we look at this, Rana, we've got, we, we've already established that Michael has his army <laughs> and that the Lord has angel armies and he's got all these archangels and then it's no coincidence who names a storm Uri or Uriel. And then right behind it names it Viola in the, another study that I did, it says that, uh, this, Zadokai, this is the other reason I feel, I feel like this is the one that we're talking about, mm -hmm. follows directly behind the archangel Michael when the battle of the force and they, when they go into battle, the forces of darkness. So I'm like, how could that be not be more prophetic with what just happened? Right. You can't, it you just, can't make this can't stuff make up. <laughs> you can't. Is uh, the seven angels, the Bible talks about the seven yeah. angels, I believe, yeah. the army, there's I believe that God is revealing one at a time. I don't think you can take it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I said it. Yeah. I, my I, mind's blown. Just yeah. So Michael, we know. Michael's the archangel. He's the Warren angel. Number two, yeah. Raphael, the healing angel. These are angels that are archangels, uh, military, so to speak, angels. They come straight from the throne of God, the presence of God. Um, the healing angel. Uh, Gabriel, the messenger angel. Uh, I, I hope I'm not pronouncing this wrong. Yeah, they're Joph they're Jophiel. Jophiel. That's what I said. I was like trying to Jophiel pronounce it correctly. Is the angel of beauty. Ariel is the angel of nature and animals. Azrael, the angel of death. Archangel Shamel, Shem the angel of peace. peace. So there's, I mean, you can look up and then find these angels, but then go and find them in scripture. Yeah. And like you said, I like how you said this. They may not list their name in the scripture, but if you find out what their name means, yes. it'll define the meaning of, of who yeah. they are. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and you'll find them when you do that, you're going to actually find in the Bible where the angel wasn't actually named, but if you know the meaning of the angel, you can, you can figure out which angel was there and present. It's pretty cool. So that is amazing. It, it, so, and I believe, you know, we were talking earlier, the Lord said there is a book within the, you know, a book. Yeah, there's a book hidden within the book. And let me tell you something. We're at the very beginning. That's why we're kind of like, okay, 
<laughs> we're okay, yeah. on the right road right now. Yeah. Because we're at the God is just now revealing this. He's just now giving little pieces. And guess what? Yeah. <laughs> He's not done. We don't have that all yet. We're still, no, not at all. We're still researching. We're still trying to find out who is what. But here's here's what I want to know. Or here's what I want to say. We don't have anything to fear. We don't nope. have anything to dread. Nope. And how many times did the Bible say, do not fear? He said, do not dread these things. But look up your redemption. It draweth not. God knows what we're in need before we do. And he knows how to supply that need. He knows how to get things to us. And if we just simply call upon him, let's, let's, let's come down off of our carnal minding thrones and humble ourselves before him and say, Lord, open my eyes. I want to be a them. I want to have an understanding of what's taking place prophetically in the spirit. I think the church had a, experienced a twisted kind of way of the prophetic, just like who was the, who was that, that was, it was, they were following that woman that was following Paul. And she was screaming, he is a prophet of God. He, and that she was actually, he, she knew exactly who he was. But it aggravated him. He turned around and rebuked her because he recognized that her information of, of who he, she was saying, this is who he is. This is his name. This is his address. This is his, you know, she was saying all these things. And listen, God has given me names before. I'm not saying that God doesn't know your name. Of course, God knows your name, but he recognized. How do you recognize the discernment, the heart of Christ? the character and who you who you've had a relationship with mm. recognize the one that didn't and said you are you are a, a, a spirit of divination and rebuked her and she had to leave him and so i believe that there's a lot of that going on right now and uh we're not to point fingers we're not to call people out on the carpet we're to pray for them we're to love them and we are to keep, do our own, the Bible says to study and show yourselves approved. And there is no greater time than right now than we need to continue to study. Find it out. Find it out. Whatever, God is so amazing because he will lead you to wherever, wherever you're thirsty for, whatever you're hungry for, he'll lead you to it. Why? How do I know that? Because the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord will lead and God, and he'll do it every time. Yeah. Well, we're at the beginning of this, Char. Ah, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what else he reveals. I, so I look forward to what God um, does from this point on. I hope that you enjoyed just uh, the, I mean, we barely cracked open the door uh, of what we've discovered these past few days. And I know that God's going to reveal more. Thank you, Char, for looking those things up for us and, and, and helping us to better understand uh, that we're not alone, are we? No, we're not. We're not alone. And no. these battles and these worries, they're not ours. We're to cast our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. And he has a, he has a huge army yeah. <laughs> of ministering angels and warren angels that will fight your battle for you. So can we pray for just a minute? We're going to let you go. Father mm -hmm. God, I thank you, Father, because you have made a way of escape from any situation we ever find ourselves in. Lord, there's been many, many, many hundreds, thousands of families that were affected in a negative way because of this storm that went through Uri and Viola. And Father, we ask that you would send ministering angels, open their eyes, Father. Sometimes an angel comes as a form of an archangel, and sometimes you just use your people because we're the hands and feet of Christ. Yeah. Lord, use us that when we see a need, that we're able to fill that need. But what we cannot do as people, as humans, you are got ministering angels that will uh, go to work and to war on our behalf. We pray for the state of Texas, Father, and, and all the other states that were heavily affected by this storm. And we praise you right now because your name is going to be lifted up. And we're not going to look at what the enemy came in to do. He tried to take credit. 
and he tried to kill, still, and destroy because of this storm. But in the midst of it, Father, we looked and we saw you. We lift you up in this time. We look, you, we look to you, Father, to redeem us, to continue to, to, to take care of us, to continue to show yourself to us. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Char, hey. thank you. It's good to You're see welcome. you, friend. You too. You <laughs> so too. We're going to uh, let you go right now, and then we'll catch up and see what the Lord shows us next, all right? Bye. Bye.